At the end of 2022, we moved to a remote cottage in the Lake District National Park. Right, so. I've seen it before, so. I have. You've not. I have not seen it. So. What do you think? Yeah, we're in a tiny little cottage. A 300 year old cottage with stone walls, stone floors, and a wood burner. First drinks of the house. After a surprise change of life plans, we found ourselves looking for somewhere to rent. We moved from the other end of the country. I'd never seen the place before and we got here just in time to watch the seasons change from autumn to winter. We're surrounded by farmers and the cottage was actually used to shelter animals when the weather was rough. But now we share it with the resident mice who, turns out, have a real taste for dried lentils. So this was full. Was full. They've got in through there and there, and they've eaten a whole thing of china dal. Almost. We've got curry-loving mice. It's eight miles from the nearest town, up in the Cumbrian hills, surrounded by sprawling landscapes, peaks, and sheep. A lot of sheep. There's no TV, no restaurants or takeaways, so you learn to make your own fun. It smells f***ing good. So interesting fact about us, we don't drive, we don't have a car. No. Um, so this is part of the reason why we cycle so much. We're completely obsessed with the outdoors and had always dreamed of living in a place like this, up in the hills in the middle of nowhere. But without a car, it just seemed like a bonkers idea. Then we had a really big adventure plan, which didn't work out. We decided that maybe a bonkers idea was exactly the right thing. We moved in just before winter and with no idea what to expect. We've never lived or stayed anywhere like this before and knew it would be quite a challenge without a car. We both accepted that it just might not end up working out. Now we're three months in and there have been highs and lows, beauties and frustrations. Constant learning curves. We're Josh and Sarah by the way, and in this video we'll be sharing our honest insight into life in a remote cottage. You have. So the cottage, we had a budget of 600 a month and we're pretty blown away when we saw we could make this one work. The stone floors are freezing, so we've got carpets everywhere and constantly wear slippers. The stone is also really uneven, so everything rocks. The old beams give lots of concerning creaks and you can hear pretty much everything through the floorboards. Oh, and the stone floors, they're so old you can literally see how they've been worn away, which is pretty amazing really. The kitchen is pretty pokey, but we love it. There's enough room for the two of us to cook, drink and dance, and that's everything we need. Moving outside, one of our first tasks was to build a shed. We picked up this for £15, which is quite a steal. We found some old second-hand bikes that we could leave at the train station, and this was their new home. Face of determination. been defeated by daylight a little bit it's also absolutely freezing so we're gonna warm our toes up and finish the last little bits off tomorrow but we're nearly done but moving in wasn't plain sailing particularly to start with our first two weeks that we've been here our first yes. week, so how have you found it we've moved moved up to the lake district 
Yes, uh, I have really enjoyed it. It hasn't been without its hiccups. There's been a few sort of bumps in the road and there's been a lot of sort of first sort of new experiences, which I knew there would be kind of getting into. So what about loving. the hiccups? The hiccups had been, <laughs> that's a mass poop, um, some mice that were sort of squatting here whilst no one was living here. So there were sort of remnants of them. There's an overflowing toilet as well <laughs> that wouldn't flush at all. Um, what else? We don't have internet still. That's quite a big no, one. The internet is quite a... Quite a big one. Uh, we had a power cut. Oh, we did have our first power cut, yeah, which was quite exciting. <laughs> which was also when something was like 50% uploaded to the... Uh, it was 50% uploaded online, the video, and it spent three days getting there, and then the power went at night and everything kind of like crashed and the internet stopped so we were so, like we were halfway over halfway there and now we're back to um back to starting point but i guess we didn't move up into the hills for good internet connection and how remote is remote well it's a seven mile cycle to drop off the recycling go to the post office or the pub and it's all pretty damn hilly now we are going to take all of our recycling to the big sort of recycling bins in the closest village and also go to the post office. Just dropped off all the recycling, got a flat tyre and no patch kits with us at the moment so it's about three mile push home but it could have been much further so and it's not and it's not raining it's not raining okay let's walk because of the location and the lack of car we're very dependent on trains the closest station is a solid eight mile cycle and it's pretty much all a grueling uphill or an exhilarating downhill depending on which way you're going. But it is a pretty special ride. From the highest point you can see all the way into Scotland. Then on the way back you're just staring into the peaks of the North Lakes. Even taking the bin out is a bit of a walk. Altogether, everything just requires a little bit more commitment and it becomes a bit more of a process too. Word. A wood delivery and Our what one. And what are we doing now? So now we're going to stack it in the wood store and bring some in and hopefully have a good fire. Which is? Our fires up until now haven't been great because we've been using not so great wood. And we've been rationing we the whole. <laughs> so tonight we have Big fire. coal. Big tree had recently been felled, so we got our first wood delivery and alternated it with the wood we chopped from the tree. Chop wood, saw wood, stack wood, dry wood, burn wood. It's quite a beautiful process that warms you twice. Done for the day. Oh, it's quite a satisfying feeling, but my forearm and my shoulder are really achy. So now we just have to stack the wood, leave it for, so we'll leave this for like a week in there, and then we'll bring it in to like beside the fire, and we found that that's like the best way to dry it. And then after that we can start to use it. So, saving money using this tree which has been chopped down, um, and quite a good workout as well. On a cold day, it can be hard to drag yourself outside and get chopping. And even harder in the rain. But the whole process just makes you appreciate basic things like warmth a hell of a lot more. And particularly with a stone building, because it takes a long time to heat up. There's no timer for a fire. So if you get in when it's freezing, you know it's going to be at least a few hours till you're feeling your fingers again. But once it does warm up, it feels absolutely amazing. And it really feels like you've earned it too. There's also quite a lot of maintenance and groundswork for the cottage. Clothes take a good three days to dry and all food gets ordered and delivered ahead. 
it's actually only since COVID that food deliveries even came out here. And I guess the big thing is internet. An average project can take three or four times as long or not even be possible at all. On the positive side, I have learned a lot more patience, but it does mean that everything needs pretty careful planning and a bit of luck too. It is uploaded to 21% after. Can you this? 4 hours. We've now been on the phone to on hold for an hour and 6 minutes trying to talk to BT to talk about the internet. Hello? Hi. And all of these processes are hugely impacted by the weather. In bad weather, deliveries don't arrive, internet and phone signals disappear, and it can really take its toll. The lakes are definitely not known for blue skies and clear days, and I can confirm it's reliably changeable. Very wet and windy. <laughs> There's a lot of beauty to dramatic weather, but it makes it pretty difficult to get around on the bikes or just to get to the shops. You get used to constantly poking your head out the window to check the conditions, then always preparing for the worst. Because it might be sunny one minute and then stormy the next. You never know. There are points when you feel isolated, particularly when there's really rough weather. Sarah spent a week away, the weather was pants and I couldn't get out much, so I did feel pretty lonely. And this is not me trying to be negative. I said it would be an honest insight. And with all of this in mind, in complete honesty, we wouldn't change it for the world. Because even though it can be isolating in some aspects, it connects you in a lot of other ways. In the evening when I get home, always hope to find you all alone. And About minus three now. Yep. So what's the last thing you've got the to do? The last thing we need to do is put this belt on, touch it. Put these packs of wood on, and then most importantly, eat some lunch. Every morning you feel excited looking out the window even if it's just to look at the stormy weather. Listening to the birds, looking out for foxes and badgers, the night sky with no light pollution at all. Watching the seasons change, the weather roll in, we feel so lucky to be surrounded by that. And for two outdoor lovers, there's just this constant excitement about all the possibilities around us. Knowing we can just head out the door and explore is worth all the hard work, mice poop and bad internet. So we feel extremely lucky. Admittedly, it is pretty frustrating when you spend all week looking forward to a day in the hills and then the weather takes a turn. That does happen a lot. But we've realized pretty quickly that we can't just lead the same lifestyles we had before. We've got to adapt. First off, you need a bit more commitment to explore. The weather changes in seconds, so there's no use waiting about for the perfect day. Really cold. Secondly, it's good to be adaptable. We're pretty fortunate that a lot of our work is flexible. So when you see a nice day, you've just got to go and make the most of it, because it might rain for the next week straight. But even though we are isolated, it really brings you together. Everything is easier and more enjoyable when you work as a team though some things work a little better than others. Try and keep it flat, yeah. Life slows down, you become more in tune with nature, more self-sufficient and resourceful. There's no TV, there's no town or pub, restaurants or takeaways, so you make your own fun, and that's a pretty beautiful process too. Moving here has really shown us that you don't need much to be happy and it constantly reminds you of the things in life which you really should appreciate. So I guess that was a little insight into our life in a remote cottage. Peaceful but demanding, minimal but with so many crazy new experiences, isolating but a place that we've really connected. There are a lot of aspects that are tough or frustrating and we are constantly having to adapt and learn new things. We're also completely aware that if we didn't really love to cycle, it would be a nightmare. But all things considered, it feels like just the place we should be. 
and we cannot wait to see what spring and summer have in store for us.